War is an integral part of our history. Many a war has been waged throughout our times for many reasons, land, money, materials, etc. However, none have been quite as ridiculous as this one, to say the least. Today, Today we, we are, are covering, covering the, the Great Emu war. war. Haven't heard of it? We're about to change that. Let's start with some basic setup. The emu is a flightless bird native to Australia. It's the second largest bird in the world, but the largest in Australia. They tend to live in eucalyptus forests, but can also be found in deserts and other drier areas. They usually only migrate for food necessities, so if there is no shrubbery, there is no emu. Their migration patterns also follow recent rainfall. They eat things like seeds, flowers, young plant shoots, and fruits, the most nutrient-rich part of a plant. They also eat rocks. Not because they're stupid. They eat rocks to help grind up food in their stomach. Emus were protected as a native species until 1922, where they were classified as vermin. That's not very nice. I wouldn't want to be called vermin. Look at how cute they are. Farmers at the time in Australia were facing hard times following the Great Depression. Their luck really disappeared when 20,000 emus migrated inland for their breeding season. These guys really can't catch a break. Farmers watched as the newly increased emu population decimated their crops. This meant war. The farmers reached out to the government about their emu issue and the government decided to de deputize ex-soldiers to help them. At this little meeting, the farmers fervently requested to be able to use machine guns to get the job done. It's not everyday people see farmers operating machine guns. Or fighting emus for that matter. The battle started early in the morning on November 2nd. Soldiers encountered 50 emus and succeeded in killing several. A few days later, November 4th, they encountered 1,000 emus. This soon turned into a victory for the emu population due to the machine gun jamming. Dominic Cerventi commented about his time in the war, saying, The machine gunner's dreams of point-blank fire into serried masses of emus were soon dissipated. The EMU command had evidently ordered guerrilla tactics and its unwieldy army soon split up into innumerable small units that made use of the military equipment uneconomic. A crestfallen field force, therefore, withdrew from the combat area. In the following days, the unit decided to move further south, where the birds were reported to be fairly tame. Army observers noted that e each pack seems to have its own leader now, a big black plumed bird which stands fully six feet high and keeps watch while his mates carry out their work of destruction and warns them of our approach. November 8th, six days later after the first engagement, 2,500 rounds of ammunition had been fired. The number of birds killed is uncertain. One account estimates that it was 50 birds. Or something between 200 to 500. I guess that's them trying to save face for our history books? That same day, Australian House of Representatives discussed the operation following the negative coverage of the events in local media, which included claims that only a few emus had died. They decided to withdraw the personnel and the guns. And, and that, that ended the Great, Great Emu War. War. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, and there, and there was, was a second one. <laughs>